In May of this year, the European Commission announced its plans for a digital single market strategy. Its stated aim is to tear down the regulatory walls of the 28 member nations to form one single digital single market. My name is Theo Savides and I'm a partner in the digital and copyright disputes team here at Bristow's. In this video, I'm going to give an overview of the digital single market strategy. My colleagues will be drilling down into specific issues of the digital single market strategy in other videos and these will be available on our cookie jar website. Uh, please do look out for the digital single market icon that we've got there, which will be on your screens now. We'll also be adding content to the digital single market strategy um, section of the website, so please do look out for that, and we'll be putting that out on social media as well. So we'll put details of that up on the screen now as well, uh, and do make sure you sign up for that. The Commission claims that the digital single market will put up to 415 billion euros annually to the European economy. So you can see the incentive for them getting this right. So what does it need to do to achieve its aim of a fully functional digital single market? Well, the Commission has identified three further aims that it thinks it needs to achieve to be able to get to that position of the fully integrated digital single market. It describes these three aims as its three central pillars. And I'm going to give you a review now of what those three central pillars are. The first pillar aims to provide better access to digital goods and services across Europe. According to the Commission today, only 15% of consumers shop online across borders and the Commission is wanting to put in conditions to improve that number. According to the Commission, today only 15% of consumers shop online from abroad. So the Commission are really looking to tackle that um, pretty poor statistic to improve both cross-border e-commerce and media consumption. The actions include harmonising the laws around contract, consumer regulation and tax to simplify uh, businesses that are looking to do business across borders. The inconsistencies in these rules have been seen to add both complication ad and administrative burden to businesses who are looking to do business across borders. So the real aim here is to both simplify and take away a lot of that administration. For the same reason, the Commission has identified rapid and consistent enforcement of consumer regulation as another aim within the digital single market strategy. This will be a key area for the Commission to get right, because regardless of the amount of harmonisation that they have, if these laws and rules aren't enforced consistently, it will really lead to a loss of confidence amongst the business community. The next area of focus for the Commission is to crack down on anti-competitive behaviour within digital single markets around Europe. To do this, they're going to take a two-pronged approach to have, how they go about this problem. Firstly, it's launched a competition inquiry into the e-commerce sector of quite a general nature. The second approach it's going to do is it's going to look at unjustified geo-blocking. Geo-blocking is a practice used by online sellers to either restrict consumers' access to certain websites depending upon their location or else to reroute them to their local online website store. As an example of that, you could imagine two different consumers in different countries seeking to hire a car in, in a destination, a holiday destination they're going to. It is quite likely in those circumstances that those consumers could end up paying different prices for the same car in the same destination. Consequently, the Commission has indicated that it's going to introduce legislation to tackle unjustified geo-blocking. From a media perspective, the focus is on copyright. There have been previous attempts to harmonise laws around copyright, both through legislation such as the Information Society Directive and also the Software Directive. Consequently, the Commission is going to introduce further legislation to allow for wider access for content. Alongside this, the Commission is also going to review the Cable and Satellites Directive. The Cable and Satellites Directive was introduced a few years ago to try to really promote the cross-border transmission of programmes using satellite and cable transmission. The Commission's review will look to further bo boost cross-border transmissions of television programmes, as well as looking to see whether it needs to be extended to co cover new services such as catch-up TV. The final piece of the Commission's jigsaw is looking at physical goods, and in particular how physical goods are delivered in the digital single market. Based on the com Commission's Eurobarometer on e-commerce, 62% of businesses cite physical delivery of goods, and in particular the high cost of that delivery, as being a barrier to them doing business cross-border. Consequently, the Commission is looking to introduce measures that will increase efficiencies around delivery to see if they can bring down those costs. 
The second pillar of the Commission's digital single market strategy is to create the right conditions and a level playing field for online businesses and innovators to really flourish. It is under this pillar, perhaps, that the impetus behind the Commission's digital single market really comes to the fore. It's clear that the Commission is frustrated that there haven't been some significant media and online internet platforms that have emerged from the European digital economy as a result of the dig digital revolution of the last few years. These have tended to come from elsewhere in the world, and in particular the US. They clearly attribute this to the fragmented nature of the digital market in Europe. However, it's here that a real defensive edge comes through from some of the proposals they're making. In particular, the Commission is focusing in this pillar on the role of internet platforms and online platforms. Here they identify things such as search engines, uh, online marketplaces, social media, and price comparison websites as the kind of online platforms that they're looking at. And here you can see that the Commission are really concerned about the role that these online platforms are playing and also perhaps the size of some of those on online platforms and in particular the importance they play within digital lives of the consumer within Europe. As a result, the Commission recently launched a consultation into the role of these online platforms on the digital market. This review will look at a number of things, including the transparency of both things such as online search, res search results and also pricing policies. It will also look at how the platforms use the information they acquire, the relationship between platforms and suppliers, and also the promotion of their own services to the detriment of their competitors. This review will also look at how best to tackle illegal content online, and in particular there will be a significant review of the e-commerce defences. These are the defences that a number of online platforms use to rely on when accused of infringement as a result of their users posting infringing content. And these defences include things such as the hosting defence, the, the caching defence, and the defence of being a mere conduit in the process of delivering um, online content. Alongside this, the Commission is looking at further legislation around both telecoms regulation and also audiovisual regulation. Here they're looking to create incentives for people to be investing in the infrastructure for true cross-European telecoms networks. And in addition to this, they're looking to pull in some of the um, new providers of services in this area, such as people who are providing video on demand services. The main aim here is to really promote European content with the view that at the moment European markets are being deluged by content from overseas and in particular from the US. This pillar also looks at some of the threats to our online lives through things such as privacy and cybersecurity. Consequently, what the Commission are looking to do here is firstly have a review of the privacy directive to ensure that any threats to um, the privacy of our lives and in particular of data that's held online are being properly covered. In addition, it's proposing a partnership with industry to ensure that solutions and new technologies are developed to provide for protection against the increasing cyber security threat that there's going to be in the future. The final pillar in the Commission's strategy is to use digital as a driver for growth. The first aim of the Commission under this pillar is to ensure that all industries are able to integrate new technologies and move to new smart systems where they can. There is a concern that standards for interoperability are being created by ma manufacturers with vested interests and in particular a concern from the European Commission that these manufacturers are primarily based outside of Europe. The Commission has therefore identified the need to define standards in areas such as the Internet of Things, big data, cloud and computing generally. The other area of focus for the Commission in seeking to use digital as a driver for growth is seeking to make the most of the opportunities provided by things such as big data and also cloud computing. To this end, it's proposing a European free flow of data initiative to really promote the free flow of data, as well as creation of things such as a European cloud initiative. So that's a quick overview of what is a very ambitious strategy. I'm sure you'll agree that even though some of these proposals were already in train when the Commission announced their strategy, there is an awful lot that they are going to have to do in order to meet their committed deadlines, which are for all of this to be put in train by the end of 2016. The initial reaction to the proposals has been one of concern, with many well-established business models being threatened by what, what is proposed by the European Commission here. 
However, while there are risks of unintended consequences arising from what they've proposed, I think there are also definitely opportunities for businesses if they really approach the digital single market in the right spirit. This will be the case both for well-established players as well as some of the new entrants to the market and some of the digital disruptors. We'll be looking to identify both the risks and the opportunities that come out of the digital single market strategy as more flesh is put on the bones. And I hope that you'll come back to this website and view more of our cookie jar videos as we document those developments and seek to help you move forward into the digital single market. Thank you for your time.